sitting out here right now, I've got some 5 8 copper. And we're working on getting this put together where I've got some half inch over here. And over here, I have some 5 8 Now, we're using the half inch as clamping pressure. And we're going to be cutting pieces off of it that will have bolts going through it. And over here, where your copper is going to land at for your uh, power coming in from my battery bank, you will have bolts going into here and they will have, they'll, they'll be coming in from behind. Let me show you what they are. So what I've got here is these bolts, they're going to come up through the bottom. They will be tapped uh, and come in. So there's tap set right there. They'll be tapped and they'll be coming in and the five eights will go underneath it, bolts coming up through it. And then these will just be holes. And then of course, we'll just take these slide the copper that we're going to be clamping inside of that and it clamps it mechanical pressure clamp uh, and the electrolytic paste is how you want to hook these up so now over here we have four get uh, four aught and one aught or one sorry it's one gauge so you have one gauge and four aught that are being ran together now the reason for that is just like automotive they'll run two 10 gauge wires instead of say one six um, for a power supply to something inside of a car. Uh, they commonly do that all the time. This is the same thing. It's just copper. It doesn't have to be a wire that big around to achieve the same thing. This is an inch and an eighth in diameter, total copper. And this is an inch and a quarter clamp. Now it's not an inch and a quarter ID. It's actually one and five eighths, but it's made to go around an inch and a quarter ID pipe. So, uh, for, um, PVC, so Schedule 40 pipe clamp. Now, over here, so we got, got a little over an inch and an eighth, maybe an inch and, I don't know, three sixteenths. So, same thing over here, and that's how big your copper line is coming through there. Uh, it might be bigger now. I think it might be an inch and a quarter uh, of copper, actual copper. There's these batteries down here that that line there will also run over and connect to so that it's surge energy. These are older. That's what I'm doing with my older batteries. I'm putting them kind of on a different system. Now, because we're using 800 watts of solar, I'll put links below to where you can get this. So if you want to build a hybrid style system, this is bulletproof. So what we're going to have is we're going to have power that comes from this that comes from the 7,700 watts of solar that'll be going through this, okay? This thing here is, is only gonna pull what it needs, but you can read that right there. Cut in at 13, cut out at 12.8. So what it'll do is it will maintain these batteries off of the main bank as needed. And then we're gonna have a lithium power supply that'll be mounting down here that'll snake up with a uh, one gauge cable and it will supply on uh, after dark so we have a lithium battery that'll be a uh, 25 volt battery that'll go into a solar charge controller we haven't figured exact which one we want yet but i'll probably be picking up one of these it seems to be very durable so let's get over here i'm going to get more details uh, you'll see more details and you can copy some of this for your own build so have the hardware, have the threading equipment, have the copper, have the saw, and we're going to get this cut and start tapping this stuff. All right. Okay, now I've already began this process of drilling this out. This is very thick copper, and I'm going to show you a little tip and a trick here. One of the things is for the bolt heads I'm going to use, I have tapered using a standard drill bit and using a quarter 20 self tapper you see this machine screw let me get one that's kind of clean here going into that copper okay using that to go into the copper will thread it and then you'll just chase it with your tap and die set make sure it's nice and clean okay now, one of the things about doing this in copper is you'll notice here, the copper embeds itself extremely well in these steel bolts. And if you try to use the same bolt every time, it's just going to bog down and snap the bolt off. It's a bad thing. So 
get you a handful. So if you've got like me, where I've got six holes I'm going to go to, I need at least a minimum of 12 of these. Now later I can take these and hit them with a power brush or something and use them on steel and they'll be fine. But for copper, it's one time, one shot. Now the thing about copper and using a tap set is you tend to snap these in copper. Copper is very grippy when it comes to that. A lot of internal friction and what will happen is while you're doing it they'll build up a little heat and copper these will get hung up and snap off. So the smartest move is right here. Let me show you this. Now I've already done that one. I've done that one and we're going to do this one where I've just started it. So I, I use the old one to put in there or the, the one previous, I'll just take it and just shoot it in just about a thread and a half just to kind of clean the top. And so just using this, just a regular impact, make sure it's nice and squared in, and then it threads it, back it out, and now you see what I'm talking about. So I can take the tap set and run it in here and clean it out. And you see the tap still wants to grab some more because of those bolts. They're, uh, I don't know, Chinesium. They're not made perfectly. So I'll take and run that in, quarter 20. And you can see a little bit of filings coming out with it there. And I'll run that in to get it nice and clean. And then what our end goal is, our end goal is to put these, uh, these bolts here. Now these bolts... They are, they are not copper. They're not brass. They are 78% uh, copper, um, but they have tin in them. So they're copper and tin, but they'll go in and then they'll go flush with my recess that I did there, my taper. And when I do that, then that thing will turn upside down and be mounted on this high temperature HDPE material and that itself then will mount on the wall so you'll be looking at it like this like that right there that will mount on the wall and there'll be some screws here so now we have a full isolation now how this will mount on here is just using the same setup basically but with a 3 16 bolt it'll be one two three on each side coming up through this and tapered and kind of slightly counter recessed. So this is half inch, this is five eighths, but these will go in there real good. And then here's the best part. When I drill through to put my studs in or my bolts using these style bolts, these are stainless. When I drill in to do that, they will not go all the way through. So these are one inch and this is five eighths and half inch. And I can just drill straight through. Just once this is setting on here, just drill straight through. Same thing. I've got some bolts over there for uh, some tappers, self-tappers. They're all the same thread counts as this collection I've got. So this is for the 60 amp controllers. This is for the 40 amp controllers. And these big babies here, which is the 3 eighths thread, these right here are for the big inverters and for their big uh, lugs that go on them. So we have a pair of three aughts that'll run on those and you can see what that goes together. So there's that and then, um, somewhere down in here. Here we go. Then this comes off the 60 amp ones, which is for these right here. And these bolts here, um, they may be used. I'm not sure, but they're a little too magnetic for my liking so i went ahead and got these which are which are three or four stainless and plus it's a neater look you know seems to be a lot neater look and you can reach to the center of it and less risk of having a wrench that would bump something so there you go we also have these style bolts here self tappers that we'll be using for these right here to start those and i've got some more similar to this and i'll put a list of these parts below if you guys are interested in trying to do the same thing uh, this is just ebay metal believe it or not it was cheaper to get it off of ebay than it was most dealers this is 110 uh, copper and it's pretty impressive stuff so um easily machinable good for these uh to go in it 
and these will go through and come out the other side. And then this is the plate right here. And it shows you inside. There's an I, that's H, I, whatever. This is the plate that when it's put in here, that will clamp all that wire together. This right here. And it'll practically smash flat when it does. I'll hit this with a uh, paddle wheel grinder and uh, freshen it up the same way with that so that it has more you know less oxidation and then we're going to be using a conductive uh cream grease whatever you want to call it on there that works great uh for terminals and things like that so let's get this finished and i'll show you it coming up on the wall there and how it's getting hooked up all right now you have the massive bus bars and this is crank down sandwiching all that cable the four and the twos the fours and the twos or fours and ones i believe and this is literally you can't i i try this by trying to drive a nail in it and i can't even drive a nail in it it just bends so that tells you how tight that is now i have five sixteenths three eighths quarter inch and five sixteenths now this five sixteenths or i'm sorry three eighths this three eighths where the lead will go to this inverter. This one here with the quarter will be a four gauge and a three aught. So it'll be a three aught running over there, a four gauge and a three aught running to this one. We're going to open this one up here pretty quick and we're going to show you inside of it. This is 240 volt, 4,000 watt with a built in charger, auto generator start, and everything else. Look below that video. I'm going to put a link and you're going to be shocked. The best place to get this is Walmart, but you can order this straight, but it's about 1100 bucks. If you go to Walmart, it's about 950. It's big deal. And it's a straight hard wire. Okay. So there you go, right in there. Gives you the idea. I'm going to flip camera there. So this is the negative. This is the positive. This is the HDPE board. And it's, it's got a, uh, a 295 degree, 295 degree. Uh, I used to have some of this. It was like 270. This is the next generation of it. It's pretty good stuff. So there you go. Look, that. It's a long video. And I'll show you how the layout is. And in the follow-up video, we're going to be powering up. All right? All right, guys. Let's go see what we've got next. All right, now we're going to get down in here on a close-up, and you're going to see what this big mega bus bar turned into. Um, I wanted to end the video kind of leaving you hanging, but I am still going to leave you hanging. You're going to get to see, why is that there? You see? And why did they, okay, we're going to show you next video. It's going to be somewhere, uh, I don't know. Look for the next video. I'd subscribe. That's how you do it. All right, guys, is that the right thing to say? Yeah, it probably is. So there we go. Y'all gonna look and see the rest of this.